Welcome back to an entrepreneur's journey. This week, I am going to be sharing some law notes since I'm studying law for a bar exam. And today, I want to talk about the Partnership Act and what it means to not have a partnership agreement. So, a lot of you guys are in business. Sometimes you deal with friends, sometimes you deal with family, sometimes you deal with complete strangers. And as you proceed in business, um, the word partner and partnership gets thrown around. Now, if you have a partnership agreement, which is a written out agreement, um, that's good. That's a good thing. You definitely want a partnership agreement. If you don't, default rules are going to set in to determine whether you have a partnership. So if it's questionable of whether the guy that's helping you every day is a partner or someone that you brought in for a certain amount of equity is a partner, um, there's going to be default rules if you don't have a written agreement. So my first advice is if you're going to have a partnership, always have it written down. Go to a legal professional to have it written down. If not, what ends up happening is um, you go to the default rules. And in most states, the default rules become the Uniform Partnership Act of 1997. Now, 38 states have basically um, brought on, uh, ha have adopted this partnership um, rule, these partnership rules. It's called the Uniform Partnership Act. And if you do not have a partnership agreement, everything falls under the 1997 Uniform Partnership Act. And again, 37 states, including Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, California, Colorado, Connecticut, Delaware, D.C., Florida, Hawaii, Idaho, Illinois, Iowa, Kansas, Kentucky, Maine, Maryland, Minnesota, Mississippi, Montana, Nebraska, Nevada, New Jersey, New Mexico, North Dakota, Oklahoma, Oregon, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Vermont, Virgin, Virgin Islands, Virginia, Washington, West Virginia, and Wyoming. Now, if you weren't on that list, um, don't think that you're immune from this. There is probably some variation of this. So what is a partnership? If you do not have a partnership agreement, a partnership is defined as an association of two or more persons to carry on as co-owners of business for profit, this forms a partnership. Let me repeat that for you guys. The association of two or more persons to carry on as co-owners of business for profit. That's what a partnership is. That's very broad, meaning if you don't have your partnership agreement laid out, what will define if you are in a partnership is whether there is an association of two or more persons to carry on as co-owners of business for profit. That will determine. Now, that's very broad. Um, again, this is codified, meaning it's in a statute. So if you do not, if you have an agreement, it's going to override this sometimes. If you don't have an agreement, it's going to go to these default rules. Now, the court or the state you're in, the state's court is going to look at certain things to determine whether you actually have a partnership. And the Uniform Partnership Act of 1997 lays out these things that they're going to look at. Number one, one of these things is joint tenancy, tenancy in common, tenancy by the entireties, joint property, common property, or part ownership does not by itself establish a partner partnership, even when the co-owners share profits made by the use of the property. This means if you guys own um, commercial real estate together, if you guys own a car or a vehicle together, if you guys own um, any kind of property together, this doesn't automatically mean that there's a partnership. So there's a plus there. And if you have partnership or you own partner partnership property with somebody, this doesn't mean automatically by itself, it doesn't establish it, but it can be evidence that there is a partnership. But by itself, if that's the only thing, hey, we both own this place, we're, we're definitely partners. No, by itself, it doesn't only mean that. Number two, the sharing of gross returns does not itself establish a partnership. Even if sharing them have a joint or common right interest in property from which the returns are derived. So when you are sharing gross profits with somebody, you're running a business, you have a pizza shop, and at the end of the month, you made $10,000 gross, not profit, gross, and you're splitting that with somebody or you're giving something, that alone, alone, there's a key word here, does not mean there's a partnership. Now, we get into what does mean there's a partnership. Right? A person who receives a share of the profits of a business is presumed to be a partner in the business unless the profits were received in payment of one, any debt by installment, two, for services as an independent contractor or wages of other compensation, three, rent, four, an annuity or other retirement or health benefit to the beneficiary, representative, or designee of a deceased retired partner, 
or five of interest or other charge on a loan, even in the amount of payment varies from the profits of the business. This means that if you are sharing profits, remember what it said, it said if you share gross revenues, you're not, it doesn't assume the state courts are not going to assume that you guys are in a partnership. But if you're sharing profits, so if at the end of the month you made 10,000 gross and after you paid everything out, there's 2,000 profit. And now you're sharing those profits with somebody every month. They're going to presume that that person is a partner unless that those profits were being paid out because one, you owed him money, right? There was a debt payment. So this guy had an agreement and said, you owe me, you know, a thousand a week. Two, the services were of an independent contractor. So somebody, for example, myself, I'm a business plan writer. I'm a consultant. They share profits with me, um, but I was providing a service. I'm not going to be considered a partner. I was a service provider. Three, for rent. So if I'm sharing the profits to the landlord, right, that's not automatically presumed to be a partnership. Four, as an annuity of a retirement of a retired partner. So if there was a partner that died or retired and you keep paying that person out after they retire, it doesn't mean automatically that they're going to assume there was a partnership. Um, and four, as interest on a charge of a loan. So if there's interest payments on a loan and you're paying out the profits to that. Now, partnership property um, is, is considered partnership acquired when it's acquired by the partners or it's acquired by one or more partners with the indication that the instrument transferring title to the property of the person's capacity as a partner or the existence of a partnership, but without the indication of the name of the partnership. This basically means when you acquire property um, and there's two people working together and you guys are acquiring it together for the partnership, they're more than likely going to assume that that's partnership property. Now, there's certain things you can't do in the partnership agreement, okay? So the partnership agreement is usually, again, you want to have a partnership agreement, and you're usually going to have um, the names of the parties, uh, the scope of which you guys are in partnership, um, usually the percentages of how you guys are going to share profits, um, but you can't exclude um, anything illegal in the partnerships, Right. So, for example, you can't say, you know, we promise um, to I, I indemnify you for uh, having a crack house. Right. Um, because the partnership agreement now is based on something illegal. The whole thing is going to be thrown out. So you can't when you're forming a partnership agreement, you need to make sure you're not too far reaching and you're not doing anything illegal in the partnership agreement. If not, it's totally going to be invalid. But my main point in this video, and I try to keep it short, I know I'm running a little bit long, but my main point in this video is you have to have, a, you want to have a partnership agreement. And if you don't, you're going to fall into the default rules of the state, which again is an association of two or more persons, right? Um, in, in, in business for profit. So I'll give it to you guys again. Um, and the association of two or more persons to carry on as co-owners of business for profit. The association of two or more persons as co-owners to carry on a business for profit is a partnership. That's very broad. And now you're going to have the state courts looking at whether um, there was a partnership. So did you guys share gross profits? Did you guys uh, share profits, net profits? Um, were any of the payments made to you as an employee or as in return for debt? And all of these things are now, you're going to leave it in the hands of a judge to determine whether the business you guys are running was really a partnership or it was just you and there was somebody else. So be very careful with this. My advice is always have your partnership agreements written out, have them signed by both parties, make it clear to what the responsibilities and equity exchange, if any, and payments, if any, are, and property, if any, are going to be um, delineated in a partnership agreement. Make sure you make that clear. And um, if not, again, you're going to fall under the default rules. Now, if you've already started some kind of partnership, then you probably want to read this. It's the 1997 Partnership Act. Um, it's been codified by 30 something states. And if your state wasn't on there, just look up at the Secretary of State. You're going to look up uh, partnership law and you'll find um, the statute or the guide there that's going to really rule partnerships in that state. Hope this was helpful. Thanks for joining. We'll be back another time. I'll be back another time here on YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, wherever you see this video. Comment, subscribe, and follow me on Twitter at Nicholas Coriano. Hope this was helpful, guys.